Recording in progress. Thanks, mm -hmm. boss. Just checking if you can see the screen before I'm talking. We can. Yes. yes. Great. So thanks all for joining today's Ally or Ally Skills Workshop. Now I'm also having a crisis about how to pronounce it. Um, thanks so much for joining. What we'll do is just briefly go over the program. Uh, so there's a little bit of welcome that we've already done. Um, the first part will be a bit of a presentation. So that part is recorded. After that, we'll stop the recording at some point because the idea is to really have some in-depth personal discussions so that shouldn't be on the recording, but the slides are available if, in case you um, you can't make part of the session or the entire session. Uh, so you'll know what is approximately discussed and you can think about that in your own time as well. Uh, so we'll do a bit of a group discussion. We'll hopefully have a five minute break um, following by another group discussion and then we'll wrap up uh, and you'll have some follow up actions uh, to keep in mind after this workshop because this workshop is only the start. And before we really start, I would like to ask Roland if he could in introduce himself. Thanks, Esther. Yeah, hi, my name is Roland. Um, I'm a research software engineer, but also the founder of uh, a website called Practical Diversity and Inclusion. Uh, I'm coming to you from the unceded lands of the Bunrung people in Nam, in Melbourne, Australia. So I have some a lot of experience in IT and software development, but over the last five years or so, I've been working on improving diversity, equity, and inclusion within uh, research software engineering and other places as well. And uh, one of the points I'd make is that this sort of work is very exhausting. It's very challenging. Uh, and so what I wanted to do was to pull together a list of resources to make it easy to be more scalable and to do things that are actually concrete and change people's minds. So that's me. Thank you, Roland. And I definitely recommend checking out anything uh, that Roland has set up because it's amazing. So thank you so much. Uh, then myself, I'm Esther Plum. I'm a data steward at the Faculty of Applied Sciences, at, which is at the Delft University of Technology, which is in the Netherlands. Uh, where we don't necessarily have indigenous people, so I don't really have a statement about that, other than that we have obviously benefited from colonialism, uh, which is why we have, I think even Delft University of Technology in particular like, has benefited from this. Uh, so I'll just highlight that instead of um, a land remark recognition. Um, my pronouns are she, her, and I have previously done a PhD in bioarchaeology, and I am a member of several open science communities, including uh, this one. So that's my background. And before I go any further, um, because today we're going to talk about privileges, uh, I also wanted to highlight one of my own privileges. And uh, one of them is that I uh, don't have any disabilities. So what that means concretely is that I can actually invest a lot of more time and energy to do all the things that I want to do uh, instead of um, well, focusing on fully participating. Um, and I say I no longer have any disabilities because uh, when I grew up, I used to have asthma and I have recovered from that, so to say. But it allowed some insights into um, what that means in terms of energy uh, and if you're recovering for something. Uh, that it might take a while and that people judge you for not having all the time and energy in the world to uh, invest uh, in your studies, etc. And I fully realized that not having this disability anymore really allows me to build up my CV, my achievements much easier uh, than people that do have a disability or that are disabled. And so I just wanted to recognize that. And what I do uh, in terms of privilege and in order to, I guess, counterbalance that is that I'm using my advantage by advocating for disability rights and um, making our ableist system a little bit more accessible. So I'm trying to use my extra time uh, to, well, make sure that other people are wasting less time in our system. So that is my personal story. But we are actually coming here to learn more about what is an ally or ally or 
whatever you want to pronounce it. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about terminology first. And first privilege, that is an unearned advantage given by society to some people, but not all. Uh, so for example, me not being uh, disabled is a privilege. And oppression is then a systemic pervasive inequality that is present throughout society that benefits people with more privilege and harms those with fewer privileges. And so the example there would be, I can build my CV quite easily um, and I actually benefit from that. Uh, in, but when people are disabled or they have a disability, uh, this harms them because they're, they cannot spend the same amount of time on the CV building. Uh, so this whole system is basically built for me, but not for others. And that is uh, oppression. It's a systemic uh, system. And then a little bit of more terminology. Um, I think this is the last terminology slide, so I'm not going to go over uh, all of the terminology because that's going to be too complicated. Uh, but there's a link in the slides to more terminology if you want to learn more. And I see, Roland, you're unmuting. Did you want to jump in? No, I'm just practicing. Okay, cool. Thanks. Um, a marginalized person is a member of a group that is the primary target of a system of oppression. Uh, so, for example, that would be a person with a disability in my example. And then an ally is a member of a social group that enjoys some privilege that is working to end oppression and to understand their own privilege. So, in that sense, I identify in that sense as an ally because I try to be more inclusive inclusive of people with disability and, and trying to understand my own privileges in terms of that um, I'm able um, yeah and participating in the system so to say but also and I think that's the next slide yeah ally is a verb and not an identity so being a marginalized person uh, is not taking any action, it's an identity. However, ally is not necessarily an identity, it's really about the action. So this is why we talk about ally skills instead of allies, because it, yeah, it's just, it's not a, it's not the same um, in, in terms of um, the identity aspect. It's really dependent on what you're doing. And also depending on what is most relevant to you, and to the particular situation that you're in, uh, you can actually switch between being marginalized or acting as an ally. So for example, if I'm in a room full of white men uh, and they are saying something sexist, then I might not be the right individual to address that because then I'm marginalized in that situation. Uh, but in other situations, because I am also white, I'm abled as we already discussed, in other situations, I have more privilege and then I can actually step in. So another example of privilege is that some of us have the ability to walk into a shop and assume that you are there to buy things and not steal them. However, this is not the case for everyone. Uh, in a system where we, uh, we live in a white dominated country, for example, the UK, um, all of the stories, TV, news coverage, police, legal system are stereotyping immigrants and people of darker skin as crim criminals and therefore um, harming them in the sense that if they enter a shop, um, the owner can assume that they're not there to buy things but to steal them. And uh, Roland has shared a resource on this where black defendants in the UK are three times more likely as white defendants to be prosecuted for homicide. And um, the Supreme Court has even ruled that this law is, um, or this joint act and joint enterprise has been wrongly interpreted for 30 years, 30 years, and yet nothing has changed in this. And the UK is not the only country that has these examples. Uh, I, I actually wanted to highlight uh, the Dutch tax system where we recently had a scandal um, where particular people, immigrants, uh, were targeted. And, but unfortunately, everything is in Dutch, so I couldn't really share that uh, because we're, we need a little bit more Dutch in, instead of just the term kaasufle, 
in order to understand this context. But just to highlight that this is not just the UK, this is a, a per pervasive, pervasive system. That's right, it's, it's very, very common. And I think one of the challenges that people face is to see these stories and string them together and realize how common it actually is. So the, the comment, the news story that Esther just mentioned isn't a surprise to me, unfortunately, because I see that, uh, I see these stories consistently. Yeah, it, unfortunately, our minister was very surprised, which was also no surprise because it's currently very dominated by white men and uh, people who have put up these systems in the first place. So anyway, we could have another presentation on that, but we just wanted to highlight an example to illustrate this. And thanks for jumping in. Um, so another example would be um, a marginalized person or person of color um, trying to apply for a job in the UK. And where we highlight the example that the white person with a British accent, so to say, got the job. Uh, and uh, yeah, well, people of color have more difficulties getting through the selection because uh, you can, well, you can see this when there's pictures or you can see this from their names, which are different and then people make assumptions. And so what an ally could do in these situations is um, basically call for reorganizations of um, these systems. So they can call their representative to uh, start um, immigration reform and really use their power and networks to help marginalized people instead of just getting the job and then moving on. So that was another example. Okay, maybe one more slide of terminology, sorry, but it is important to go through these things so that you have a better understanding of what is going on. Um, so power is the ability to control circumstances or access to resources and or privileges. And then intersectionality is the concept that people can be subject to multiple systems of oppression that intersect and interact with each other. And this terminology has been coined by uh, Kimberly Crenshaw. And so that means that, for example, if you're a person of color and you have a disability, then you both have to deal with racism and our ableist system. Uh, so that obvious, obviously puts you into an even more disadvantaged uh, position uh, by the systems. Uh, so that is intersectionality. And power is, um, well, the more power, the more control of circumstances or resources that you have, the more power that you have. And that might also differ per situation that you're in. I just add one more thing. Yes, um, power can manifest itself as the ability to be forgiven as opposed to the ability to be punished for something that you did wrong. And so it can come in many different uh, shapes and forms. But you can tell when it happens is because when two people from different power backgrounds, for lack of a better word, um, do the same thing, they get treated differently. And that's the forgiven versus the punished sort of mean. Yes, exactly. Thanks for sharing. And I think we have a bit of an example. Maybe not right after this slide, but we have an example. Um, so why should we focus on these ally skills? Um, well, I I think I've already highlighted that a little bit in my introduction, um, but basically we, as an ally, you can provide opportunities for people from marginalized groups to make up for the opportunities that they have actually lost. Uh, so this is the right thing to do, I'd say. And identifying these opportunities to help is actually a skill that you can develop uh, and train. I'd say, but that's what we're okay. also going to do today. Was someone on muting? Oh, yes. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. If yeah. you could go, just go back, I just wanted to explain this example. So this was Ella Fitzgerald, who was a jazz singer. And I just want to read the text because just in case people can't read it, I owe Marilyn Monroe a real debt. It was because of her that I played the Macambo, a very popular nightclub in the 50s. She called the owner and told him if he'd book me, I'd take a front table every night. 
I never had to play a small jazz club again. And I think this story, this story sort of illustrates that she didn't need to do more training. She didn't need to do more, uh, practice more. She didn't need to do a, a mentoring. She actually needed someone to sponsor her and to give her an opportunity to share what she could do. Yes, thanks for uh, reading that out loud. Right, the example about um, being forgiven or, or um, having differences in how you can act in a situation. Uh, I think this is a good illustration where the image is, is highlighting the problem of women of color in the workplace, uh, where the women of color is entering the organization which is uh, very white. So in the start, they're, they're all happy because it's a diverse, uh, it, it adds to the diversity and they welcome her. Um, but once she actually starts to actually point out the issues that she's experiencing within the organization and trying to improve the organization uh, and pushing for accountability, she is not receiving the same welcoming response um, because uh, the organization can deny, ignore, and blame uh, the individual themselves um, for the, the issues that they are experiencing. And in this sense, they're placing the responsibilities to change on the woman, woman of color. Um, and well, this I, I'm not going to go into, into detail of this graph. Um, it is in the slide with uh, some more detailed alt, alt text as well. Um, but in general, this makes people leave organizations. Uh, and another recent example of that is Tim Gebru, um, AI ethics, who was advocating for uh, well, more ethical, um, how do you say that? Uh, ethical considerations in artificial intelligence research. Uh, and she was recently fired uh, at Google and she started to point out the problems there. And so the burden is then placed on the individual by making them leave the organization instead of actually addressing the systemic problems that are present in this organization. Right, we've done a lot of terminology uh, and big things and systemic systems and oppression. Um, but we'll go back to something which is perhaps a little bit easier now um, and go um, do an exercise in order to identify your own power and privileges. And um, what this exercise will help you do uh, is basically realize uh, which privilege and powers you have. Uh, and this can help you uh, in acting as an ally because you're more aware of these power and privileges that you have or don't have. And the exercise is voluntarily, so you don't necessarily have to do it, uh, but we're going to take five minutes. So then you'll have to wait for other people to finish the exercise. And uh, if you have a privilege that some people assume that you have and you think you do not, and you can uh, make your own decision about whether or not to include that as a privilege. Uh, so this is really an exercise for yourself. Um, we, we're going to do a little bit of a share out, but you don't have to share anything that you don't want to share. Um, we're going to drop a link to the Google Doc in the chat in a sec. Um, but first, I'm going to start ask if we can stop the recording because this is the Right, so before we continue with the discussions, I wanted to go into a little bit about what this workshop is not. Uh, so after identifying your power and privilege, you do not certainly have like a certification or an apology or a, a get out of jail for free cards and that makes you done with uh, and being an ally like this, this is not like an hour and a half that you've invested and now it stops. Uh, this is really, I, I'd say, the start of things or continuation of things if you were already working on this. Um, it's also not representing anyone's employer or giving any legal advice. That's, I think, the, the very US disclaimer that people always put on presentations. Uh, and during our discussions that we'll have, we're also not going to assume whether oppression exists or whether it's bad or whether it should be stopped. Uh, we assume that you think it, you know that it exists, that it is indeed bad and that it should be stopped. Uh, so we're not gonna 
have any discussions about that. We're going to discuss more in detail how we should do that. And in order to, to do that, um, just to highlight that during the discussions, you can leave or return at any time. You don't need to explain yourself for that. Uh, as mentioned before, the interactive part of the workshop is not recorded. So we just did a share out. That part was not recorded. And all of the group discussions are also not recorded. And if you um, do share any uh, anything in the etherpads, know that other people can access it. So please anonymize any experiences that you don't want to be publicly shared. And also share at the level of uh, how comfortable you are with people that you've just met uh, at a conference, for example. So if you don't want to share too personally, that is uh, obviously completely fine. Uh, and anything in this workshop is also completely voluntary. So if at any point you want to stop participating, again, that is fine. Um, just the basics of ally skills. Um, the idea of them is to be short, simple and firm. Um, whenever possible, don't try to be funny. I struggle with this myself sometimes, but um, making a joke is very contextualized as well. So whenever you try to make fun of things, it can actually escalate uh, and turn out to be worse. So it's, it's also not a funny situation, right? So we shouldn't treat it as a joke. Um, so try to avoid that. Uh, instead, just be very plain, short, simple and firm. Don't um, leave it up for interpretation. Uh, you can also play for the audience. Um, whenever something is happening in a group, you may not convince the person that is doing something that that might not be the appropriate behavior. But at least you can show to the audience that this is not appropriate behavior. This is not something you're willing to accept in this environment. Uh, so sometimes it's not just about changing the person's mind, but also changing the minds of people uh, that can see what is happening. It's um, again, what I've said from being short, simple and firm, it's easier to practice simple responses because any response is better than uh, no response at all, because that is uh, confirming the status quo, so to say. And it's also important to pick your battles. So as we're in systemic uh, systems of oppression, there's a lot of battles you can pick up, um, but the idea is not to fight all of these battles, uh, but to do what you can. And also if you had a terrible day and you're emotionally exhausted, maybe right now for you, it's not the right time to pick something on. And I'd also like to highlight, uh, that we should really treat these uh, ally actions as the bare minimum expectation of us, uh, because if you're an ally and you've benefited uh, of certain opportunities, uh, then doing this as a return is, is basically a minimum expectation. So maybe not expect any cookies, thanks, uh, and glitters sprinkling out. Uh, instead, a bare minimum expectation. Um, I think those are the basics. What if I make a mistake is maybe a question that you ask yourself. And if you're making a mistake, the best thing to do is to basically apologize, correct yourself, and then move on. And that can be awkward, making a mistake. And for that bit, just wanted to show you a picture of a fennec fox who is very comfortably lying on uh, a piece of wood and is having very big ears, which I think is a very nice representation of what it means to be an ally. You basically try to listen to whatever the person is saying and then when harm is being done, you apologize and then you move on. And to make this moment a little, a little bit less awkward, remember the Fennec Fox, look how cute it is, look how big the ears are, and it will be okay. Because you will make a mistake. I changed the slides, uh, the text slide a little bit to what if I make a mistake? But you, since you're, you're practicing this, you are very, very likely to make a mistake. I also still make mistakes. And um, yeah, what you do when you make the mistake is basically apologize, correct yourself and move on. And if, any, if you take anything away from this workshop today, it's this. This is a very important uh, 
point. So do you mind if I yeah. uh, add something in there? Um, the thing you have to understand as well is that people are individuals. So if you made a mistake with one person and then you go and you start talking to someone else and you think they have the same attributes and so you have corrected yourself and so you do it the new way, you still may get blowback from that next person because everyone's individual. And so one of the uh, most uh, simplest ways if you want to be an ally is to actually ask, hey, you know, is there something I can do to help or where, where do I need to do? Because everyone's different. And this is a, a person-centered approach, which is very, very um, standard in the disability sector. Because if you've ever worked with dis uh, disabled people, you'll know that everyone has a slightly different way of having to, to be resolved to, to, to have accommodation. Yes, and maybe also another example, this is why I'm saying people with disabilities and people who are disabled, because even for that type of phrasing, people have different preferences. So, and the easiest thing is indeed to just ask the person about this. Thanks, Roland. But yeah, don't try to linger on too much to your mistakes that you're making, uh, because that's only making the situation more more uncomfortable. So it's easier to move on and reflect about it later. And before we continue, I wanted to share one of my awkward moments where I'm making mistakes. Uh, I sometimes still assume gender and pronouns. Um, it's very integrated in my system and how I refer to people. It's getting a bit better. Um, and just what Roland has mentioned, whenever I'm now not sure, I try to refer to people as them just to um, make it more generalized. Or I basically ask people, um, sorry, uh, what are your pronouns again? Uh, something like that. Um, and just so that you give them the opportunity to provide that information themselves instead of you assuming things, which can be quite harmful. So that's uh, that's one of the areas where I still have to improve sometimes, and I'm sure I have many other areas. Um, what we'll do now is move into the scenario and group discussions, and I think this first bit can still be recorded, uh, but the group discussions obviously not. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll go into breakout rooms where we'll discuss a scenario and what it is that you can do as an ally. And before we do that, uh, we're going to just briefly introduce ourselves to each other. Uh, using, uh, well, sharing our name, our pronouns, uh, and the position or something about your life that you want to share, just so that you have a little bit of a feel of what is going in, uh, of who's in the room. And then each of the breakout groups will choose a moderator who can, uh, well, share the discussion space equally between people, invite people to talk, ask others to talk a little bit less. Uh, and the notion of feel free to moderate the moderator is also because sometimes the moderator can talk too much. So please also feel free to point that out whenever that is happening. Uh, and you also need to, to choose a note taker uh, who will report out shortly what it is that you've had discussed. We'll do two breakout sessions. And so it would be nice if you can um, rotate these roles for each of the scenarios. Uh, again, joining the groups is optional, so if you'd rather stay in the main room, that is also fine. Um, and a few more things in order to prepare you for your discussion. Uh, so the scenario is just a scenario that could potentially happen. It's not a trick question. There's no hidden uh, objective here. If you're not sure of the situation, pick one of your interpretations and discuss this. If there's time enough, you can also discuss multiple interpretations of the situation. Um, but whatever you do, try to focus on how someone could act as an ally in the situation. Uh, this is not about discussing what the marginalized person could do. It's about what can you do as an ally. And then you in the scenario description is also a theoretically uh, person, what they could do as an ally, not literally you in the situation. Um, that should help hopefully so could help. I just, yeah. Could I just go back one slide? And I wanted to sort of make a point somewhere. Um, uh, yeah, so yeah. just for the um, males in the group, 
one of the things that sort of happens or tends to happen in a lot of gendered uh, workplaces is that the non-males are the ones who are usually asked to take notes and report. So one of the very first things you could do as an ally today would be to offer to do the take, take the notes and report um, to, to try and avoid those situations and be proactive. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And as you notice, Roland mentioned this as a male, and maybe I feel less comfortable as a woman to bring this point up because I indeed have been in situations where women have to take the notes, which is very frustrating. Um, going back to the slides with the breakout room thing in the middle. Right. Yeah, please. Um, are they are people already moving or not? No, it, it, there's a, a bit of a breakout room thing going on in my screen, so it's a bit sorry for the being distracted. Um, when you're in the group, please um pay attention to who is dominating this discussion. Is there anyone in your room who is uh, not having difficulty being hurt? Are there any patterns related to gender, race, uh, race, age, or anything else uh, going on? And also, how do these types of discussions compare to ones that you normally have in other contexts, so at work or in other situations, for example? So please keep that in mind while you're discussing. And then finally, the scenario that you're supposed to be discussing and uh, discuss what an ally could do is at a meeting, a woman makes a suggestion, but no one picks up on it. Later on in the meeting, a man makes the same suggestion and is given credit for it. So this is the scenario that we would like you to discuss. I'm gonna stop sharing the screen so I can actually, yes. Um, Boss, if you could stop the recording. <laughs>